everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I know it's been a few weeks since I last put up a video. I've been very busy with, um, I'm actually working through a couple of college courses right now and working full time, so uh, extremely busy, but uh, I have some free time this week. And so I'm planning on uh, producing a few videos and we'll be uploading them over the next couple of weeks. So first of all, before we uh, move into the rest of the video, I did want to thank everyone so much for uh, all the comments and likes and activity and traffic um, on my YouTube channel. <clears throat> I really appreciate it. All the new subscribes have been fantastic. Um, I just love it if we could um, add a few more subscribes to that list. So um, I've been looking at the uh, traffic and I'm noticing that I'm only getting 1% of the people watching my videos have subscribed. So it'd be awesome if you could hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Um, and it really kind of uh, helps keep me going and I'm hoping to eventually monetize. So that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. So um, if you could give this video a like and subscribe, that would be awesome. All right, let's move into the content of this video. So I've been using the Moonlander keyboard for almost exactly two months today. Um, and I just wanted to share some of my thoughts about the keyboard that I have after having been using it for two months. So I'll be sharing some of the things that um, I've learned, some of the things that are different than I thought they would be, and some things that I've discovered about the keyboard and about the ecosystem around the mechanical keyboard um, uh, ecosystem, because there are a lot of other mechanical keyboards out there and it's a whole nother world. So over the past two months, I've really done a lot of research into that particular world. And so I thought I would share some of my insights um, as they pertain directly to the Moonlander keyboard and my experience using it over the past two months. So as you may have noticed, I am in a new location. This is my new office. I made one video a couple weeks back, um, the Vim workflow video with my Moonlander keyboard in this office, but it wasn't decorated and it was a little bland, but um, you can't see all the decorations now, but I'll probably pan around and show you some of what I have set up. But uh, this is my newly redecorated office. So. I've obviously been doing a lot of traveling between my home and my office here. It is probably maybe a 15, 20 minute walk from my house. So really not that far, but it is traveling, um, more traveling than I was doing two months ago. So I did want to talk a little bit about how my workflow has changed and how some of that has um, impacted the way that I use the Moonlander keyboard. One of the biggest things that have changed is the carrying case. So originally I wasn't really using the carrying case very much because I didn't have really any use to do so. And I thought it was going to be rather cumbersome and it just looked like a lot of work to try and unpack everything, take the Moonlander down, unscrew everything, and then put it all back in the case and then eventually pack all the cables in. And then when I get to where I'm going, you know, open everything up, unpack the cables, unpack the Moonlander, get everything all set up again and plug it all in. But over the past two months, I've had to really streamline that entire uh, system. So I've gotten that to work uh, fairly quickly and I have the Moonlander set up in like, you know, just a few minutes. So it's really not as bad as I was anticipating. And the carrying case has come in handy more than you'd realize. So I've really actually come to appreciate having a carrying case um, and it's really worked out quite well uh, for me. In addition to having a different workflow and using the Moonlander in a different way, I've also found that my typing speeds have actually gotten a lot better. So I know a lot of people um, are talking to new mechanical keyboard converts and, and there are a lot of questions about, well, why should I switch? You know, um, what, what about mechanical keyboards is lucrative and why is it interesting? And, and I've heard from a lot of people that, well, don't expect your typing speeds to get that much better. That's not really why you're switching. You're switching because it's a fun hobby, because you really want to customize things and you like that clacky sound, or maybe you don't and you can change all that. You like the feel of a mechanical switch. All those reasons are fantastic reasons and I agree with them all. But I would also say that my typing speed was increased dramatically. So originally I was typing at between 25 to 30 words per minute on a good day, which was not great. Um, and that was on my MacBook keyboard and it was the, you know, standard staggered layout and all that stuff. But um, I had actually never taken formal typing lessons. So I just learned all that from playing Minecraft on servers, interestingly enough. So when I was like 10 years old, I learned how to peck things out. So 
I have never really developed some great typing habits until two months ago when I got my Moonlander keyboard. So I am now typing at 55, between 55 and 60 words per minute on my Moonlander keyboard. Um, on a good day, sometimes I can get uh, 65 words per minute, but roughly between 55 and 60. So it's, it's actually been fantastic and it's pretty much doubled my typing speed. And I've kept, I think the reason for that is I've kept a fairly stringent and strict uh, typing regimen. So I use the Oryx live training software on their website to um, every day I'll go, I'll log on there and it's only three minutes. It's literally um, three one minute exercises that you go through and it's typing out Alice in Wonderland, a few chapters of that. So it's nothing crazy. Um, but I found that keeping up that regiment and keeping up that schedule over the past two months has really dramatically helped my typing speeds get a lot better. So definitely worth doing that if you're brand new to the mechanical keyboard world or really just any keyboard world. It's 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 very beneficial to take some time and, and work on a program like that and kind of teach yourself how to not peck for the keys, but just, you know, uh, touch type. It, it, it'll actually save you a lot of time. So I've talked a little bit about the modifications that I've made to my layout in the Oryx software, but I just wanted to briefly give an overview of my new changes, just in case you missed that in one of my other videos. So one of the biggest things that I've found that's really, really helpful and super cool is how you can touch one key. And for instance, I'm using the slash, so you can touch the slash key, type it once and it gives you a slash, but then if you hold it down, it actually becomes a different key. And so in the Oryx software, they call that the dual function key. So what you can do, and this is what I've done personally, is I have the slash, which is conveniently right under my pinky. And so when I press it once, it prints a slash to the screen. And if I hold it down, it actually gives me a different key. And in this case, I have it mapped to the control. So I have it mapped to control under my pinky, which is super, super handy. I don't have to reach for it. It's just right there, right underneath, which is really handy. So I'm in the home row and then all of a sudden I just go back just a little bit, one row, and there's my control right there. Super simple. So it lets me do a lot of things, it's especially on a Mac, you can do a lot of things with the control button. So you'll switch between uh, workspaces you can also um, you know, see all the programs that you have open. You can switch between different windows in one specific program. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with that uh, control key. So I found that to be very helpful. Another thing that I've talked about in uh, previous videos is the arrow key layer. So what I've done is I, I've mapped a key to take me onto one specific layer um, and that layer turns my H, J, K, and L keys into um, up, down, left, right arrow keys. So not, not in that order, but it turns them into arrow keys so that I can, instead of reaching down for arrow keys on a different row or somewhere else on the keyboard, it's right in my home row. I don't even have to move my fingers, which is perfect. Um, so I've mapped that under my, um, my left pinky and so it's very easy to reach. I just hold that down and then if I'm switching between windows or workspaces on a Mac, I can just hold that down with my pinky, hold the control with my other pinky and then move between workspaces with my other two fingers. So it makes it very, very easy to get around without using my mouse. I also have a specific layer set up for symbols. So I can easily get to symbols without having to reach around for them. I have them mapped in a in two columns. And so I have the three um, symbol pairs that I use. So I have the curly brackets, the open and close parentheses, and then the open and close hard brackets. And so all of that is down in one column. So it's two rows, or it's, it's two keys, two keys, and two keys all the way down. So very, very easy to figure out where all of that stuff is. I have my uh, equal sign mapped under my uh, third finger, which is very easy to reach as well for me. Might not work as well for you, but I'll let you be the judge of that. I'm just sharing uh, my current configuration. So I will make sure to link that configuration in the description of this video so that you can have access to that. Copy it, make your own version. Uh, maybe this is a good place to start for you if you're a little overwhelmed, or maybe you don't even wanna look at it and you just wanna make your own version that works too. One other thing that I did wanna mention is macros, which is really, really cool. Um, it's something that you can do where you can click one button and it prints out a whole bunch of different keys or it runs a whole bunch of different functions. So what I've mapped that to do is it will actually create a string. And if you're a programmer or a developer, you'll know what I'm talking about. It'll create a string and really what that's just two quotes. So it'll create one quote, second quote, and then it will also move my cursor in between the two quotes so that that way, 
I'm ready to type and I don't have to punch a different, a whole bunch of different keys. So what that saves me from doing is holding shift, pressing the quote, maybe pressing quote again, and then, you know, reaching for the arrow keys and moving over. So saves me all of that time and all I have to do is just press one button. So I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is doing the same thing with a couple of different other symbols. So if I'm trying to create like an object in JavaScript, what I might do is have the two object symbols, which is the curly brackets. And so I'll hit a macro uh, key and it will produce one uh, or maybe both curly brackets and then just move the cursor inside of that. So um, you can do all sorts of things like that, really get creative with it. And that's just something I thought I would mention here. Okay, so thank you very, very much for watching. I know this was a, a really short video. Um, I just wanted to share some of the thoughts that I had uh, since having used the Moonlander for about two months. I've really enjoyed my experience so far and I definitely haven't regretted uh, making the purchase while it was a rather large investment. I, I think it's a, a, a really good investment for me to have made. So highly encourage you if you haven't already, check out the Moonlander, start saving up for it. It is rather pricey, but I personally think it's worth it. If you haven't already, uh, check out my other video on uh, the Moonlander review um, where I went through and showed you some of my favorite parts of the Moonlander and why I really enjoy it. And that'll kind of give you an introduction to the board that I'm talking about. So if you haven't already, uh, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. And also like this video and share it. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Please leave some comments. I'd love to hear about any ideas you have or any questions you might have about the Moonlander keyboard.